enactment there. That yeah. was really good. It's fairly accurate. I like that. That was good. Like that? Yeah, it was really good. I, I wish you would. We're, we're known. Accent, we're known but... for our quality reenactments. Yeah. Oh. Like we can't. Really... I, I'm so bad at the fucking. Oi. Oi. Okay, yeah. Oi, Dad. Oi, Pop. What's what's? This what is North. Is this North London? Is this this South. is London? This is South London. London. South yeah, London. South Oi, Poppy. Like, Poppy. <laughs> no, what did they say? Poppy. Oi, Oi, Pop. Poppy. Oi, Dad. Oi, Dad. D- yeah, the keys, yeah, the keys, <laughs> the keys on my bed. <laughs> oh. Like if Andrew can do, can't do Australian, like I can't do Cockney. That's it. That's fair. Oi, uh, Shirley, you must put it there. <laughs> so to kind of give you an idea of the conditions that we're dealing with here in the atmosphere, <laughs> um, really the setting for this entire case, you have this uh, number 63 on Wycliffe Road. Uh, it was a pretty much like uh, unremarkable street and you kind of just had a bunch of terraced houses and most of the district was working class. Um, you had living in the house, uh, you had Walter Hitchings, uh, which was uh, the father, uh, age 47, his 51-year-old wife, Catherine, or Kitty, uh, their 15-year-old daughter, uh, daughter, Shirley. And then you had a couple of other occupants as well. Uh, you had upstairs, in the upstairs rooms, you had Wally's 73-year-old mother, Ethel. And uh, then you had- former former all-pro defensive lineman, Ethel. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Group. Yeah. 6'4", 250. <laughs> She's fucking humongous. She's a unit, man. Honestly, she's. I was like, there is no fear. Like, there is no fear. Now, I don't know where that two fifty sits. I don't know if she holds it well. But it's a six but I like four pers- frame. Yeah, that's, that's what a six I said. Four I, li- frame. I like to per- like in my head. I'm like, she holds it well in my head. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, she's a unit. Absolutely. Here's this little little side story about Ethel. In World War II, when Hitler was bombing the shit out of London. She would go up to the roof and sit on the fucking roof. Like she was going to punch these things out of the way if they were coming for her house. She's a fucking unit. She'd be like in her late 60s, early 70s. Let's say World War One. She yeah. would have been a little bit more spry during World War One, I'd imagine. Yeah. Right? Either way. He puts, <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, don't, don't bug Ethel. Don't fuck with attic. Ethel, man. Yeah, don't no. fuck with Ethel. I can't uh, even yeah. believe they're geist in this house with the Ethel yeah. in there. You yeah, think pop and be like, nah, we're good. By all accounts, yeah, the, the family dynamic seemed to be, uh, at least in the beginning, you had Ethel, who is like the head matriarch, like pretty much like whatever she <laughs> said, she she ruled over yeah, that no home. Shit. Yeah, because she um, was fucking ruled over looking down on everything, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, she'd like, no she'd palm your head. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Just pick you up, move you aside. <laughs> Um, and then uh, the, one of the other regular characters would be uh, Mark, which uh, is a pseudonym that is used for another male relative uh, in his 20s. Um, little information is really given about him uh, because he later kind of just didn't want any part of this. Understandably, like the, the, the stuff that we're going to get into is kind of like, yeah, you would probably never want anybody to know any of this stuff that happened. Um, so soon after the experimenting with the key and trying to opening things, um, noises began to be noticed uh, by the Hitchings. They started in the downstairs bedroom uh, about 10.30 p.m. on Friday, the 27th of January. Um, this would be 1956. And, and th- yeah, the sounds, like, I mean, anyone who's lived in an old house would know, like, my house does it too sometimes, where you get, like, you get these pipe noises where it's like, do 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 like, it's like, like a loose it, pipe in a wall. That's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, it's something, and, just, and it just rattles a little bit, and you're like, "Ooh, what was that?" Like, and I, I, I think it's a pretty universal sound. Like, if you, if you've lived in an older house, or like if you've seen any kind of horror movie, you know what this sound is. <laughs> Yeah, so they they start hearing these kind of bumping and scratching sounds, and they kind of progressively got louder and more frequent to the point where they were starting to hear them during the day as well, not just at night. So, and they got so loud at a point where like the fucking neighbors came over and were like, "Shut the fuck up! We've had it with you and you shit. Quit fucking hammering around. Tell Ethel to quit doing fast feet upstairs. We've had it with her shit." <laughs> and they're like, "Where it's not us, buddy." It's Ethel's us. up in the attic, just banging and clanging. And she's got a fucking bench. She's getting gains, like fucking. But like when I. The, the sounds apparently were so loud that they like were all encompassing in the house. Like they mm-hmm. said, they were coming from the walls. It, the, Ethel described it as it sounded like something was trapped in trying to get out. 
yeah in the like, walls like it's room. fucked up and let's like again you have neighbors coming over and being like what are cut you that doing? shit out <laughs> yeah what are you doing we're fucking losing it <laughs> uh so they soon kind of understood that the these these sounds or something kind of seem to be focused or surrounding Shirley at some point. Uh, There's something with her that when she kind of been around that these, these sounds would kind of either follow her around or kind of be in the general area of usually where she was at was something like that. Now um, Wally worked. Um, uh, he, he worked as like an, an underground, like he worked in the, like the subways, like is was his job. And um, one of his coworkers, a ghost conductor. <laughs> um one of his one of his fellow underground train drivers by the name of Henry Hanks actually um, sent him a note offering his assistance because apparently Hanks was a bit of a spiritualist and and his free time um, I guess as a hobby he practiced as a medium and, is, and but, maybe I don't know. know how you say it, and this is this is not Fox but this is just my and you'll you'll see why later on in the story but maybe a bit of a how do they say it in the UK pedo. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's, that's, that might be that's speculation. Um, Very speculation. <laughs> but you'll you'll no. But well, I'm going to allude to that. <laughs> the reasons why, because some of the shit that uh, Mr. Harry Hanks does later on is questionable. <laughs> So uh, Mr. Hanks uh, offered up his services as a part-time medium uh, to go ahead and try to drive out whatever was the, you know, the malefic uh, entity that was causing these sounds uh, to, to in <laughs> number love, 63 on White I love Road. that. I love that as a part-time medium, as if there's that, that alludes to there's not enough work to do it full time. <laughs> right. So it's like, it's, it, well, it makes, it's not that there's not enough work. It's probably just not enough money. Well, or here's the, the other fucking thing. Live off that shit. The other thing that I've thought about is because like there's a lot of fucking grifters in that kind of space, and it's like if this person is like, yeah, I do this, you know, I can take care of it, and then it's like these people like can go and like it can't like they know this whatever these family experience, old house, whatever they go and they're like, yeah, I can do this, and then people will go to this like, holy fuck, it's real, it's real. <laughs> they have no experience doing it at all, and that, to me, like when you label yourself as well I'm, i do this on the side of my desk i'm a part-time medium <laughs> um yeah it, 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 to just give it a bit of context like spiritualism was fairly still it was still fairly popular around this time like uh, you know uh there had been the big revival after world war one people kind of got into it and it kind of we experienced this entire revival and the you know most of the western world uh these ideas of communicating with the dead um you know could be attributed to some people you know as a coping mechanism of trying to uh adjust to the loss like the massive losses experienced by families um you know after world war one and world war two and so um but uh hanks uh you know described himself as being somewhat of a competent medium i'm not sure by what standards but he uh so what he did is he uh, you know told wally that i can come in i can help you out so wally invited hanks to come visit number 63 on sunday uh the 5th of february of that year and so when he arrived he brought with him his wife um and his daughter and they all kind of held a little seance uh you know accompanied by shirley in order to try and contact this communicate with this and, and spirit just, or entity that seemed to be focused for, on her for real for real i just want to say this again Got something to say? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> the wine's hitting you. Am I interrupting? No, no. It's just for, for real, guys. For real. <laughs> for real. <laughs> I just have to say this. For real, I'm guys. No, I'm. I'm, I'm for serious here. Yeah. Like your white girl white wasted wine. already. This is serious. Oh, white wine wasted. Like, I got this is like so God. serious. Uh, we serious? should. We should have a seance. That's what I was gonna say. We should uh, have a seance. Next, I agree. That, right. The next time we have a pod week, we should hire someone, a part-time medium, to come and do a seance with us. Why are they called mediums? Live? Why are they called mediums? Is it because it's like in between? Like you between got dimensions. small and you got large oh, and then mediums it, yeah. in between? No, you're between dimensions. You got yeah, the you got the supernatural plane and reality, and then you got in between, and that's where the mediums but, operate. So whether or not they'll let us do it in live, between because it's in between small yeah. and large. There you yeah. go. Whether they do it, it whether they allow us to do it live or we do it and then 
do our experience i would love to do one i'm just saying like i think i'll, it would be- I'll plan i'll tell her there's no we have nothing recording no but i'll have hidden cameras and microphones no problem my worry is hey guys thanks for watching i know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments but here's the next one over here or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation you get full access to it on patreon anyways thanks guys enjoy the next video